What it do? Good morning. I had to go live earlier. I got one of my uh, got one of my daughters here. Her name is Bam Bam. We call her. Her nickname is Bam Bam. She'll be up in a second. <laughs> needing some cereal and only want me to fix it. She talked with her hands. That's why we call her Bam Bam. I don't know. I must have been going out and on that yak when I had her. <laughs> and my son, yeah, he about to go to orientation today. Yes, Lord. I'm going to run his mouth. I'm in here filling up my lighter. He want to run his mouth so much. I told him, go out and get a job. I told him two days in a row, go, go sign up for applications till your hand get tired since you want to run your mouth so much. So he found a job. Got his work. He got his little uh, non-slip shoes on. He's smiling. He's happy now till they work the dog. <laughs> yeah, he happy now. I'm happy too. I ain't got to hear his little mouth. You know, we all get to that age, you know. My mama, like I said, my mom used to call it smelling that little must between your leg. I never understood. I was just like, yeah. But, you know, I did, at a certain age, I did start thinking, like, you know what? Everything just felt different. I just started, everything was a little bigger. <laughs> and everything felt different. You just like, yeah, I've arrived. It's my time now. Oh shit. Hold up, hold up. Let me not get blown up on camera this thing. So um yeah, you know, we all feel like that. You know, it's my time. You know. I remember one day I'm looking at my mama one day. You know, I wasn't disrespectful because my mama allowed me to talk back and forth with her, engage as long as I was respectful. But you know, after I felt a little different. You know, I kind of said something before she finished. <laughs> yeah, I kind of, I kind of wanted to talk, but I said something before she finished. And I looked up. You know what I'm saying? I, I want to do this. Fuck! Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's try it your way. Yeah, yeah. We'll we, we, we'll keep trying it your way. Cause you know, once you interrupt and you start getting rude, that was my mama pet peeve. Like, I thank God she allowed me to talk because we went through phases where, you know, my mom was at peace. Uh, my dad was working. He, you know, he owned his own truck driving business. He had three trucks. And so we ain't worried about money. And my mom did what he asked. She, she was raising her kids. She was chilling. Um, but I guess she found out some things she didn't know. <laughs> and then a shift happened, you know, and that's when everything went topsy turvy. And, you know, she she had to work. She had to start working and all these things. So that her communication level with us stopped. She didn't want to hear that shit no more. When she was working, when she was stressed, we went through a period. She was, uh -uh, ain't no talking. I got to go to sleep. I got to be back up. I got the food on the stove or go make this. Fuck that. I'm tired. Don't say shit to me. <laughs> so I was like, whoa, who the hell is this? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I, I didn't know her for that. So by the grace of God, she heard her back and she got she was uh, on disability. And so for a while, she was a little upset about it, but then she got back to doing the things she liked. We in the hood with a garden in the yard. She she started back thinking and seeing things. I'm not gonna let this situation turn me into a bitter, angry person. She made the best of her situation and where we were at. And so that's how I learned to, wherever you at, nigga, make it look like heaven. You know what I'm saying? Put a little garden outside, hang your flower pots, do it. She made the hood look like a goddamn paradise. And so that's how I learned. So when I, that's what I say. When I talk about mama's cooking, it's very important. And Dr. Boyce, I'm sorry your little pudgy ass didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, back on you, Doc, you ugly motherfucker. Let me say something to you, boy. Who is this right here? I don't know Kwame, he a populist. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I don't know Kwame. Uh, they just asked me to talk about him. I don't know him. He a motherfucker like Jim Jones. He a cult leader. He get everybody. To fight. He Jim Jones. 
uh, uh, I don't know Kwame, but maybe he mad about, you know, it's hurtful and being a number one draft pick. And if I was there, I would have supported you. But I don't know Kwame. <laughs> Who is that, y'all? <laughs> this is a double talking bitch. <laughs> How the hell you don't know somebody and then proceed to make any form of educated opinion? And then you call yourself a motherfucking doctor. Boy. Boys, boy, <laughs> I can't believe they sent you at me. See, first they realized these two fake ass CB4 gangster, all the smoke. Yeah, one person in that trade. Yeah, Jeremy Lynn, what's up? Yeah, I'm a real nigga. Kuma Batata. Oh, yeah, Jack. Uh, 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 who, who here this time? You know, after they sent them two stupid motherfuckers, they realized they weren't mentally capable of fucking with me. <laughs> <laughs> then they shut this little beta male nigga that couldn't get the girl for 30 years. <laughs> hey, doc, let me ask you something. You a doctor, right? You ever seen body language? I saw a clip of you goddamn running your goddamn mouth, building up to your proposal, and your hand was switching. You were trying to hold on to it. She was backing up. You try to pull her close and shit. That's aggressive, doc. You need to stop pulling on these <laughs> <laughs> that was fucking aggressive. She couldn't wait to get her motherfucking arm off you and put it on her hip like. <laughs> hey, hey, Doc, that video sum up your whole motherfucking life. Boy, you tricked that woman into marrying you. You a slick fucking weasel. You gonna put her on camera. You gonna start crying. How, she would look like the devil if she said no to an economics major that's been worshiping her. You said that was you give she give you life. I thought the Lord gave you life. I thought your mama helped the Lord bless and bring your ugly ass in the world. And you said a woman that rejected your bitch ass all your life gave you life. Doc, you ain't that goddamn smart, Doc. Doc, Doc, you've been tricking people, Doc. See, I've been listening to you, Doc, and I've been watching you now, Doc. Since you've been studying me, Doc, see, a third eye get you, we'll start studying you. And everything I see about you, boy, make me do this. <laughs> ooh, 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 no. I smell, I smell. Whoa, Doc. The girl don't like you, Doc. Doc, you sitting there whining and whimpering, telling me, I saw her over there. And, and where were you at? She was looking at you like, nigga, get hurry up the goddamn story. She rolled her eye three times. If you want some help with your YouTube or even talking or anything in life, nigga, get to the fucking point. You filibuster too goddamn much. You filibuster a goddamn marriage proposal. And then you start crying. Ain't you supposed to be happy because you know she's going to say yeah? But you knew she wasn't going to say yeah. So you had to play on that girl, that woman's good nature. She didn't want your motherfucking ass. She was going to use you for a couple of years till she find a goddamn strong alpha. <laughs> now you done let her into your economics. So she'll win-win either way. So, okay, little nigga, you want to sit down here and cry. Put me on the spot. Try to make me look like the bad woman when you known around the world as the good guy. Okay, you the good guy. So she married your little weasel ass. But boy, I saw another picture, boy. It was a picture of you, you, your wife next to Willie D. See, you wasn't in the middle. It's you on the outside. Yeah, see, I study too, Doc. And I know this man shit kind of good, Doc. You boy on the outside oh excuse me boys since you think you an elder boy because i don't think you're elder because look how you treat yourself you on the outside your wife is in the middle stuck in the middle willie d on this side nigga your wife ain't even looking at you and y'all just got married she looking at Willie D with more. She's smiling and cheesing. Boy, I see all of her. I see her canines. I saw her incisors. I saw her fucking molars when she was looking at Willie D. And she just married you. 
that is not going to go like you think it's going to go, Doc. She going to show you, Doc. <laughs> that woman no love you. <laughs> no, no, no. Nigga, you done already made a mistake first week of your marriage. <laughs> and now you had made a mistake already crying on your goddamn knees. Talking about, <laughs> she give me life. You a damn liar. The Lord Jesus Christ gave you life through your parents, motherfucker. Stupid ass. Fit. You a doc and saying dumb shit like that. Pandering ass bear. She don't even. What? <sighs> if you didn't cry while you was on your knees with that bullshit proposal with that ugly ass fanny pack. See, I wear a fanny pack, too. And that's usually when I'm going through the woods and in parks and I don't want to scare other people. And when I have my firearm to protect my family when I'm going through these woods and stuff. See that? Yeah, I have a fanny pack for that, too. But I ain't getting down on my knees and asking no woman to marry me with no damn fanny pack on. Because I respect myself enough and I respect her enough and I'm man enough to do it in a manly way. Hell, I might stand up. And say, baby, I don't want to be beneath you and I don't want you beneath me. We're going to stand here together. And baby, I want you to give me the highest honor. Do me the privilege of marrying me. And she let me stay erect and understand the purpose of that. You are pandering punk, doc. Hold on, I ain't eat no breakfast yet. Let me stop neglecting myself. Hold on, let me give me a little intermission. Y'all hold on to that for one second. Come on now, let me eat a banana. God damn. Let me eat a little piece of my Chiquita banana. Yeah, I got to, I got to stay healthy. I got to stay healthy. But yeah, that's that, that's interesting because funny thing is, like I said, I've been dealing with guys like Doc my whole life. So I knew after that shit, Jack and them wouldn't work in the smear campaign. I knew they was going to use one of these uh, bourgeoisie, sophisticated males. Um, that's not working. So then now they'll probably try a woman. Um, because like I told y'all, any movement has been stopped by either the bourgeoisie gatekeeper males or either the they'll point women into the direction of a man and highlight maybe some opinion that he didn't have that a woman may like. Get them in their emotional feelings and make them think like a group and get into this go along, get along gang when every woman is not a, the same. Women are not a monolith. We need to stop keeping women on code because I know women like my cousin, she ain't shit and she'll tell you. <laughs> she'll tell you she ain't shit. She, 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 she charging niggas for they, as soon as they call her, she getting their cash app up. So she'll tell you she ain't shit. So we got to stop this whole shit. We got to stop playing, okay? We got to stop shooting every woman like a missile, <clears throat> like somebody disrespecting all women. All women are not the same, okay? Unless you think that's the truth, then I don't believe it. All women are not the same. Okay. Shit. And Godfrey, I bet not catch you chewing like me again. Just, let me, matter of fact, Godfrey, hold on, hold on. You ain't gonna get this chew right here. Yeah, now. How about that, guys? Funny motherfucker. And Pierre, dog, shout out to you, Pierre. Uh, how many minutes I got left, Pierre? You said I was on 14.9 or some shit like that. How many more I got left? How many seconds? <laughs> shout out to you, homeboy. I told y'all comedians, I'm not finna joke with you, nigga. You crazy. I know, <clears throat> know y'all motherfuckers got something in the chamber. Y'all do this shit for a living. I know dummy. I ain't getting in no boxing ring and I ain't getting in no damn comedian ring. Thank you. <laughs> but speaking of comedians, I would like to get a hold of Cat Williams. 
I'd love to get Cat Williams on this motherfucker too, because I believe he know exactly. Because some of the shit he said, I think I said it before. Some of the shit Cat Williams said on on his comedy special, uh, he wasn't supposed to say that to y'all. <laughs> so I knew goddamn well at that time. I said, "Ooh, ooh, ooh." ooh. Soon as he started talking about them private rooms and all that, I said, "Oh shit, cat, cat going to jail." <laughs> I said, "Oh lord, that nigga, <laughs> boy, he's telling it." I was like, "Shit, I hope he got a lawyer," and obviously he do, because every time he going to jail, like he said in his own interview, he he getting out quick, fast, tearing the ass up. So that man is a man, and uh, I, I I can't say he's not lying about the things that he said, and so. I think Cat Williams know firsthand about the go along, get along game and how they do things in front of you and watch how you react. Uh, like going up to a grown man rubbing his crotch and seeing if the pressures of Hollywood make him stand there like he's not a man and do nothing. I'm not judging you, my brother. I'm not bashing you, but I would have done something. That's just my opinion. I have a right to my opinion. I'm breaking everybody's face in the party that looked at the whole scenario because I'm a, you're not supposed to do that. They wouldn't have did that to a woman. There's a reason why they took the biggest, strongest motherfucking shit. I wouldn't even look at you like it, it want to fight you and made the smallest, littlest white boy go up there and do you like that and make you stand there and do nothing. See, that's what they're doing to all us in society. They make the white boys do you any kind of way, and we stand there and do nothing. But if it was a black boy walked up to you and did that, sir, I think you would have tackled him and broke his face. We've been trained. We've been trained. Not me, but we've been trained. I don't give a fuck what color you were, and I don't give a fuck what job you have over your head. I got one job protect myself at all times <laughs> and that's my job so motherfucker once you do something outside of my protection and what i respect fuck a job yeah 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 i don't need no motherfucking job that bad motherfucker i used to work at mcdonald's i'll go back to mop and flow but the one thing you ain't finna do is rub my gen genitalia i don't give a fuck if my wife did i don't give a fuck if nobody was there if it was just me and you and you did that your ass getting DDT, Jake the fucking snake. <laughs> Man, please. And see, that's probably why they've been after me my whole motherfucking life. I don't give a shit. I feel like a man still, though. Some of you niggas just want to be famous. <laughs> Do anything for fame. <laughs> no, I somebody. <laughs> that's why I try to connect these young boys to the elders. <laughs> Not some uh, a feminized male who don't understand his own pitfalls and that his fake education is his weakness because he don't allow other men to be looked at as men because he's his ego. He's tapped into his ego and you should not be walking around here with that much ego. There's a multitude of things you don't know just because you have a doctorate. There's a multiple multiple things you don't know how to do. Hell, there's multiple things I don't know how to do. I seem to be the only motherfucker honest about that. I, I said, shit, I ain't even get the goddamn uh, money, all the super chats and all that. Motherfucker, I broke the internet. I didn't have no business account and all that shit set up. I didn't know this shit was going to happen. I was honest. His videos, I don't know how to record and do all that shit. I just got here. <laughs> shit. And then when I went viral, I'm like, oh, shit. I got to protect myself. So it's so much going on. Cause like I said, my first job is protect myself at all times. So although this is viral and funny to y'all, some people this shit ain't funny to. Yeah, some people in the dog mad trying to catch a nigga slipping. And I'm trying to make sure I catch them on camera or either catch them slipping. Cause I got to protect myself. And I see a lot of you YouTubers are now making videos talking about, well, what is his plan? What is he gonna do? God damn, what is your plan? What you gonna do? I'll give you some advice if that's what you're asking me. Hell, I was a child in that situation. The only things that I bring up is from a child's perspective in that situation. I don't give a fuck how many adults I offend because I have a right to speak on it because I live through it. So I'm going to speak from a child's perspective sometimes that might offend some people. But your children feel this way. 
We can go get letters from the boys home and, and what they're writing. We'll read them on my page. These boys are hurting because of the decisions that you motherfuckers are making. Some of you. So it ain't about your feelings. OK. Jesus Christ. Let me sip me some water because my blood pressure done went up. I'm tired of all these grown ass adults. But it's a YouTuber, a grown ass man saying he built the community. You grown. OK, build your community. If I if you can listen to some of the things I'm saying and implement it, do so. I'm listening to what you're saying, because some of the shit you saying I like and I'm going to implement them over here. But we got to stop all this group up. Hold on. Slap hands. Hurry up. No, we don't really know each other. We ain't really connected yet. Get your shit going. If you really want to help, there's a way that you can go to the school and there's a lunch lady at every school. And you know what that lunch lady has? She has a list of all the children on the reduced or free lunch program. Those are the children that need those shoes. If you wanted to set something up through your school locally, sir, where you can make an impact and not waiting on somebody else to do it. If you not just wanting to talk, here's some advice. Go do it where you're from. Encourage your friends to do it. Why don't all of y'all get that list and each one of you pick a child? Make sure he has a pair of boots. Make sure he has a nice pair of dress shoes. So if he's at the age where he can go try to apply for a job. Stop trying to point out what somebody else you feel should be doing with motherfucker. You got hands and feet. I can't be in Philly. I can't be in Cali. I can't be in Georgia. I can't be in Texas. You there, motherfucker. Go to your local schools. It's kids in your neighborhood right now. You know that you riding past in a motherfucking Bentley with a money phone. I live in Atlanta. We got all these rich ass rappers and they run the restaurants and they shout in the goddamn street and they jump and dance when some women can see they motherfucking ass. But the water boys is running up, scaring the shit out of every goddamn body. Now, why these niggas ain't got a building somewhere in Atlanta getting these kids merch, water, whatever the fuck they need so they can sell it and go take it to their mama? Oh, we really love black people. If you niggas stop trying to get on camera so much, stop trying to pick out what somebody else ain't doing and realize whatever I started doing when I grew up and started looking at this first, what could I do in this situation? What can I hear from this brother and take out the good? Whatever the bad, whatever the beef, I don't know nothing about, I don't got nothing to do with. I laugh at it, whatever. I, I just, boom, I, I don't eat the bone of a ribeye. Push that over there. What is the meat of what this man's saying? He said opportunity zone. Okay. He said trade schools. Okay. He said building the foundation, building your own community, building some safe places for these mothers like Devin George is doing. Where the money stay into the community, into your buildings. He has people that live up above that work in the grocery stores underneath that go right back up and pay rent to him, which he paid taxes, which he helped the police, which he helped everything around his own neighborhood. It's time to stop fucking running your mouth and talking about it. You can fucking do it. I'm not no fucking leader. I'm just here to tell you shit you might have not have known about. And then if we can sprinkle a little mama's cooking and everybody learn from each other instead of tearing down each other, I might like your ideal over there when I hear it. And much respect. Thank you for sharing the knowledge. Take it, apply it here and apply it somewhere else. It works. For so long, black folks haven't had access to wealth. So that's why as soon as our little black bourgeoisie get a little money or get a little thing on the wall, they make you pay for the knowledge. That's why you're not an elder. Elders know better than to make people that don't know pay for the knowledge. You are not a doctor of your community because when there's sick people, you don't say you only want 10 percent of it. What kind of doctor does that? Doctors don't say I'm going to heal 10 percent of my patients. They try to heal them all. You're no doctor of the community, sir.
While you're trying to dissect me, sir, you expose yourself. I came here with no economics degree and understood that if I went viral, if I'm going viral, why not let the people use the videos? Because all I wanted to do was get the information out anyway. And these people can make money off these videos, which in terms, whether they like the message or not, because it's trendy, they're going to start listening to some of the videos which they did, which people with better skills than me started researching. You go along, get along, gang bitches. And so as you begin to attack me, more and more eyes are watching you bitches. And so now what YouTube is trying to do, because they understood I'm a little bit smarter than they thought. Now they're trying to make it to where we, you guys can't make money off of my videos. Now, if you put my name in the title, somehow you might not make any money off the video. Somehow, I'm bad for the community because I'm talking about building the community. And Dr. Boyce, you did say, you was right, Doc. Shout out to you, Doc. You was right. You say, you say I'm dangerous if I'm for the black people, if I'm intelligent, and, uh, and I don't got no white man over me. You did say that. And you too, you are going to expose yourself. You're going to show people that we not free. I said we was in a simulation, you two. Yeah, I haven't said any hate speech. I'm a black man. I have no power over anybody. By definition, what I'm saying is not hate speech, ma'am, sirs. So you're attacking me, showing we the people that we're not free. We don't have the freedom to speak because company's policy going to kick us in the ass. You guys don't care about what somebody say because all I got to do is sign up for a Patreon where you get a little more money out of it and then I can curse, right? You really don't care. You care about monetization. So stop lying to people. We can see you. Stop it. We're not that dumb like y'all thought. Like Dr. Boyce Watkins say all the time, condescending bitch. YouTube, you guys are going to expose to America that we're not free. Because y'all are the right hand puppets of this go along, get along game. Y'all are the right hand puppets of this mis misinformation. TMZ, you are too, allegedly. Uh, YouTube, you are too, allegedly. Alleged, alleged, alleged. I think you media motherfuckers uh, the go along, get along game creators and the corporations fund you allegedly, alleged, alleged. And that's why y'all been fucking with me for so long. Because while y'all got niggas fighting me, y'all know y'all can't say shit. Send another nigga because y'all can't say nothing. <laughs> and pretty soon, black folks gonna get tired of all you black folks coming at a black man that ain't saying nothing, but let's build the community. See, it's going to be easy to spot you little Uncle Tom. You real, not Uncle Tom's, because, you know, if you watch, if you read the book, Uncle Tom, Uncle Tom was actually a good thing. But most of y'all don't know that. But um, go read Uncle Tom's Cabin. Um, but most of you niggas that uh, stop every movement, the reason why you stop every movement is because, like Dr. Boyce, you know, you've been picked on, bullied your whole life. You've been behind your whole life. You couldn't successfully, you know, get the girl you wanted when you wanted her at a prime. You know, you had to wait until, you, you know, now. And uh, you still can't be happy because, you know, you ain't connected to nothing. You don't know these kids like that. She don't really like you like that. I can tell that. Anybody can tell that. And I ain't no doc. <laughs> but, uh, shit. I'll pray for you, though, doc. You got a lot of soul searching to do the way you talk to people. Who the fuck want to listen to a fat boy shit? What? Now, y'all started dissecting me first. So for anybody that's going to think this is rude, they started fucking with me. And I asked to be left alone. I did. I know the new narrative they're spinning now is, oh, now he's aggressive. Now he used to just defend himself but now he's going too far i'm still defending myself against everybody they send 
I wasn't talking to Dr. Boyce Watkins. And I'm going to defend myself against all the go along, get along game. Remember, I came here cussing, fussing, and shouting. But uh, yeah, he just didn't know that I knew that they in the go along, get along game. Because there's more people mad at me than a woman who allegedly left an organization that was for black, that took in a lot of money for black. She didn't have the money to buy all these houses and cars and all kinds of shit before. Now, all of a sudden, she got money to buy that, electric gates, allegedly, houses, three, four of them, allegedly, cars, allegedly, get Cadillac deals, allegedly, buy islands, allegedly, and step down, allegedly, and ain't none of you motherfuckers questioning her, allegedly. You questioning some super chats from me that I said I was going to buy shoes with, and I didn't even get the goddamn super chats yet. And I still got some shoes that I bought with my own goddamn money, but I got to show them to you because you want every motherfucking receipt from me. How about this? I identify as Patrice of uh, color. I didn't do fraud. That was good enough for y'all. <laughs> yeah, boy, it's funny what y'all will take from who y'all like. They did a good thing when they made Instagram. I wonder if them Asians or them Chinese made up Instagram. We know they made TikTok. Boy, they watching everything us dumb Negroes do. How do Dr. Boyd said, we all dumb. No, they just, we're not dumb. We just being distracted. We keep watching celebrities and who they date and who they this and who, uh, is, he, is he white or is she white or is he black or is she black and is it colorism and is it this and is it that? It's, do they like me and why not? Is it fat? Is it skinny? Is it shaming? Oh my God, it hurt my feelings. I don't like what they said. I don't like their opinion. I want to stop everybody from talking uh, while they passing laws that in a minute, all the Charlemagne lesser charge ass niggas. When they touch your daughters, when they send in all the Charlemagne the God to the schools to read to your kids, once they fondle your kid, all they got to do is go to the mental hospital for a couple months, be right back out reading to your kid and touching and feeling on them, allegedly. They'll be right there at the ballet when y'all go to them recitals and y'all putting these little old babies and dressing them up and make up. You know, I almost got thrown out of my daughter's little quote unquote pageant dance team whatever the hell it was i i thought they were trying to groom her to be a stripper i stood up what the fuck is this <laughs> it was like hell no you put a long ass weave on my daughter hair down to her butt she already needed small ass little goddamn shits i don't know why she got to wear that to fucking dance when she could wear whatever to dance goddamn it and then you got the nerve to have her booty shape motherfucker come on girl come on bring your ass on come on now she is. I was that daddy in there. They were mad. No, it was just that. No, don't tell me what the fuck it is. I'm, I'm in that motherfucker, boy. Yeah, they called me toxic that day. <laughs> I, I guess I woke up with violence, but that's my motherfucking daughter. She fuck you mean. How we know it ain't pedophiles in the audience. Just taking pictures, getting videos. You putting little kids hair down to they bunky and, and got them, got them in small ass shit. And then you got the nerve to have my motherfucking daughter twerking, talking about that's hip hop. Boy, ooh, yeah, oh, boy, yeah. My daughters don't dance no more. After that, I, I, boy, me and me and the baby mama got into an argument. I said they going to fucking karate, <laughs> and they was in karate. If you put them in any more fucking dance, me and you gonna dance. Never mind, never mind. I don't promote that. <laughs> but I was, I was pretty upset. Yeah. See, a lot of y'all ladies say y'all want a real goddamn man. And then when we tell you what we like and what we are and what we're trying to protect our daughters from, you want to call it toxic. It's a goddamn lie. You remember, I was a child before. I seen girls that ain't listen to their daddies. Yeah, I seen girls that the mamas hide them away from the daddy and then they still want a relationship. So they go off with their man and their daughter left alone at home. And I seen that girl sneak out and what my homeboy did to her. Yeah. And how many men she was with before she had a chance to really learn life. I seen this shit. I told you I was a child in this situation now. So all you adults with your feelings, fuck your feelings. Because y'all, some of y'all went through the same shit. Stay on cold with my ass. 
You know how many women I've dated and they've told me they've been touched as a child by their cousin, by their brother, by our uncle. And then they still got to look at them at the picnic table because somebody in the family made a decision not to tell. So that's why when some of you motherfuckers talking about it take a village to raise a kid, my eyes go to looking at you immediately. Because I know how many of you chiefs in the, in the village been raping the goddamn village. I mean, our word in the village, sorry, that was for educational purposes. Retract that. I snapped. I'm crazy. But it's a lot of you motherfucking heads of the village that everybody like been taking advantage of all the women in the village and all the kids in the village. So I got my own village and, it, and it's about to get a big gate going up around. It. I already got no trespassing sign. Yeah, I got I got my own village and I think I can watch my village. Me and my dog. Yeah, me, my dog, my boy. And I'm about to get two more dogs. Yeah, the dog's gonna help protect the flock. Yeah, I don't need no, <laughs> I don't need no village. Uh uh. Too many of y'all bring your own concepts into the village. And I'm not with some of y'all concepts. Y'all like when I say this, still think I'm crazy? <laughs> Uh, and, and, and Matt and Jack, y'all need to stop playing with my goddamn YouTube, man. What the fuck is wrong with y'all? I thought y'all said we was joking. Now y'all want to fuck up my YouTube view? Let the people hear the message. Let the people eat. Stop limiting the people videos. I ain't did nothing to y'all. All I did was call you Becky with the good hair and CB4. And both of those things are true. So why y'all fucking with me? You niggas want to joke. You, you even admit it. Everybody was joking on me. So you wanted to get away with it. But nigga, I caught you. I caught you too, bitches. So all I'm saying is take your ass with it, leave people alone. It was fun and games when you were joking. Now you the joke. <laughs> and everybody talking about, uh, man, your soup, your your uh chat room speeding too fast. Yeah, and I found out how to slow it down, and that shit is distracting. So I leave the shit hollering at because some of y'all just want to argue in the uh, chat room and distract me. And so I keep my flow going, not paying attention. So some of you YouTubers, you know, you might want to speed your shit up too because you can get caught up in that shit and forget about what the fuck you were saying. You be standing there like, yeah, oh, Brian, what you say, Brian? Uh, uh. Nah, fuck all that. I got shit to say on my own. I don't need to see that shit. Mm. Shout out to all the love I received last night while I was out smoking hookah. Shout out to y'all. Um, the YouTuber I met. Oh man, the shit is in my pocket in the room. I think he said DJ Jazzy something. This is I got it, I got this shit in my room. But uh and also, man, shout out to you haters, man. God damn, it looked like y'all were ready to jump on me, boy. But my mama get you. That, that third eye told me, hey, you know what? It's time to go. There's too many niggas. Bu nigga was bumping into me, trying to scrimp with me. They had a, a somebody bumped. I couldn't tell. I ain't gonna lie. There's no effect. I couldn't tell if it was a man or a woman. I, I didn't know. But then when I saw on the side, it was like pressing the breast in, but she was gangster. So I was just like, okay, I don't care what it is. I, you know, I'm just trying to get my check because it's time for me to go. When niggas start bumping into you, I'm trying to eat dinner. You got your ass damn near on my elbow. And you don't think that's rude? You don't understand why I'm like, yo, what the fuck? You know, then 20 more niggas come in there. I'm like, oh, it's time for me to go. <laughs> so got my goddamn check. Hey, you stay right here. You stay right here. I'm going to go get the truck. And then I'm going to meet you right here. And we got on up out of there. So thanks guys for bumping me and warning me you was trying to start some problems because I don't want any problems. But thank you though. It was a good warning. And some of y'all, man, y'all just go out just to start problems, just to be rude. Is y'all life that fucked up that y'all, I mean, 
I was just sitting there quiet as a church mouth. Motherfucker bumped me. Damn. Bumped me again. And one time I'm trying to get my drink. Okay. Motherfucker standing over here, he trying to dance, pan hanging way down low his ass. Hold on, man. God damn. Fuck. My brother got so frustrated, he put his food, he ain't eating that piece of steak. He put his goddamn food down, slid his chair all the way back. He was, he was at the point where if another motherfucker bumped me, he slid his chair all the way back and he started doing like this. <laughs> I said, oh shit. That's why I say, let me get the check. Hurry up. Let me get, let me get the check for goddamn. Yeah, let's let's get the check. Let's get the fuck on up out of here. These people don't know how to act. And so I don't know what's going on in Buckhead. I don't know what didn't happen to Buckhead, but boy, look at here. Buckhead, y'all don't let the fox in the hen house, boy. Y'all can't control the motherfucking thing in Buckhead no more. I'm gonna have to find somewhere else to party. <laughs> it don't make no goddamn sense. It's almost like you gotta go out with 40 niggas and strapped up like the Navy SEAL to go get a fucking drink. <laughs> Shit. This is America. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. You got this nigga talking about power nomics and all this other shit. Look at the way we look at each other. Your power nomics ain't gonna reach nobody until you give them some goddamn power nomics. Dr. Boyce, why didn't you open up your YouTube page so you can allow your people to use your views? You didn't know that can put some money into their pocket? You didn't know that would make them a little more connected to you? You didn't know that they would have a little more of an interest in listening to you at least just seeing if what you're saying is right. I think the reason why you ain't do that shit, because you're right. You only want to listen to 10% of fake people that sound like you. Because if I would have heard your ass talking a long time ago, I'd be like, this condescending bitch, fuck this motherfucker. <laughs> that's, that's probably what I would have said. Soon as you would have opened your mouth, Doc. And I'm going to tell you, Doc, I've been like that since a kid. There's a lot of stories I ain't said yet, and I might not say that, but there's been a lot of influ influential people trying to get me to do certain things, Doc. And I told them as a little bit of teenager, uh, no. And I told you no too, Doc. And just like as a teenager, that no come with consequences, don't it, Doc? First, you wanted to be my friend. First, you tried your best to help out. First, you liked some of the things I was saying. Soon as I told you no, I turned into a demagogue. <laughs> I turned into Jim Jones. <laughs> I turned I turned into a cult leader, and that everybody listening to me is stupid, and everybody listening to me is the what's going wrong with the black community, and that is so important that my channel get taken down because I said the N word. But I noticed you ain't say nothing about them Asian boys that was saying the N word yet. You didn't say nothing about that Asian man that shot the Asian little child, uh, black little child yet. You ain't out there lobbying and on your channel saying this is why we need a black, uh, a black protection bill like the Asians got. You, you, you ain't out there saying none of that. I'm saying we need one. We've been needed one. You see how many black boys getting laid out in the goddamn street? We need protection bills from everybody. We need protection bills from each other. We need protection bills from the whites. And we've been needed a protection bill from the Asians. We need three full fucking bills right now, doctor. You going to help us get them signed? <laughs> you punk bitch. No, the stupid motherfuckers that they put out front for us tell our young boys that the most important and the best decision they can make is to marry single mothers and because you did it and the other leader uh, the fist up nigga you know what we need a black male emoji a family emoji uh even though i don't got a black family and i don't date black girls no more we need a black family emoji we see y'all trying to trick us we want a black family emoji right now <laughs> And the other slick head nigga that got a movie 
what the fuck are we doing a movie for about a role playing nigga that jumped over a gate, got suspended, fighting girls and all this other shit? What the fuck the movie about, nigga? We already said we could read the paper for that. <laughs> boy, boy, I know, I know why you gotta have your hair so slick. Yeah, cause nigga, there's plenty of players that have better reputations than you, bitch, that could have got a goddamn movie deal. And I'm not saying it's me, cause it ain't. Well, I got a hell of a movie, but I'm probably gonna do my own punk. But anyway, uh, I I can't think of why I would want to want to watch a Matt Barnes movie. But you know what? Because you hide in groups, and because them white boys gonna pay for who you like, and they probably paid some good actors, and they don't know where the money coming from. They just think they like your bitch ass. But I see you. These are our leaders. These are our leaders. Nigga could have twisted his goddamn ankle, ended his career fighting on his kid's birthday, get a movie. <laughs> Stupid motherfucker. You try to fight every strong black man. Carcino showed a video. Of you trying to fight motherfucking uh, Ibaka. Really? You wanted to fight Ibaka. I noticed Abaka had your ass lined up too. He had that shit ready. He had that guy in hand. Wherever your dumb ass head would have moved, he would have followed his hand. He was an idiot. And you stood there like that with your chin up. He would have broke your guy. He was a, you one weird old boy. You've been watching too many gangster flicks. All he would have had to do was let that right go and your ass would have been noodle leg. You're a fucking idiot. That didn't make you look tough. Then he showed all the times you were running your mouth, tweeting like he wanted to fight. And then when the man responded, you ain't say shit else. Kind of like now. You know I'm with the shits on camera, way in California. <laughs> How many niggas you got protecting you, boy? I bet you got three, four bodyguards, don't you? I'm running your mouth like that. You got to have a nigga like me protecting you, beating people up for you, don't you? I bet you do. You have me fighting one of your friends, and <laughs> cause you're not a man. You say things other men got to deal with. That ain't manly. That ain't manly. Any woman I'm with, I protect her like that. <laughs> hey, you getting protected like a woman. You run your mouth. And then you don't get to stand on the consequences of what come behind it. Because you were with the go-along, get-along game. You was a punk. Y'all notice I stopped drinking a lot, a lot more of them Cokes. You starting to see that water come back in my life. Yeah. I'm only going to get better. I'm going to get better at this YouTube shit, too. Yeah, because I'm going to start... You know, learning. I'm going to start practicing with my homeboy. Let me stream yard you. Let me pull the video up. Let me see if I can get this shit to play. Shout out to the YouTubers that's been giving me advice a little bit without calling me or nothing. They just saying it in their video. And I've been listening. <laughs> I'm going to get a little better. That's good advice. Oh, that's a good one. Thank you, brother. Just sitting there like, thank you. I appreciate all of you because I've been said it. And if you haven't heard it, I'll say it again. I'm not good at this YouTube shit. I'm just a funny motherfucker that's telling the truth. But I'm going to get better at the technical side and all that other shit. And Dr. Boyce, you're going to shit your clothes. <laughs> you want to sit there and lie. I, you know what? That just showed people. We the people. I want y'all to see how weak the media really is. If you don't fall for their bullshit narratives and what they try to force you to believe, if you don't listen to that bullshit, notice how they can't have a real conversation. Notice how someone that you call a doctor is sitting there lying right to your face where you can go back to a video where he's fucking with me and I'm saying, please leave me alone. And now he is now turning it around like he's the victim and I'm bothering him. How many of them have done that? I think everybody who started fucking with me have said that. Told you they play from the same script. Go alone, get alone, gang. All of them rude, condescending. And when once they mad at you, boy, they let the cat out the bag. They don't give a fuck. Your life is dirt. Your life, your whole career is dirt. Your family is over. Damn, black man, I thought you love a black man. My son can hear you, boy. That's what that's black power, man. That's what you're gonna say. 
Damn, I didn't say that about you. I just said you got ran over for acting tough and you a CB4. And nigga, you can ask them niggas in Indiana. You actually got ran over and your mouth actually got bust up playing CB4. So because you want to lie on me and I tell the truth on you, my life is dirt. My life is over. Man, I guarantee you some in niggas in Indiana know how arrogant and condescending your bitch ass talk. And that's why they ran your dumb ass over. And that's a fact. See if it's some Gary Indiana niggas up in here. They know they ran your bitch ass over. Don't tell on yourself, but they probably saw it. So what did I say wrong? Why do my life got to be dirt? I just gave an observation, just like, you know, you gave an observation of my basketball skills. I respect it, whatever. But that don't give you the right to say a man's life is dirt. Especially not when you're supposed to be about brothers, powerhood. You know, that sounds contradictory to me. Then you're hanging around a slick hair weasel that'll invite a man to his penis. I don't know friends like that. Mm -mm. That, ain't, that, ain't, that ain't the games me and my friends play. We don't do that. I couldn't walk back into my brother's garage after saying that to a man and me and him don't have a conversation. The first thing he gonna ask me, nigga, what the hell are you? What the fuck wrong with you telling a man some shit like that? Is you nuts? See, it's called checks and balances. You niggas start wearing pretty shoes and cut your knees out and shit, be around safe places and think you can start talking to men any old kind of way, huh? It's all good though. People hear you though. I guess that's what the new pro, pro black is. I'm pro black for the 10% of the people I like, like Dr. Boyce say, and everybody else, fuck you. Everybody else, you talk to them like a dog. See, that's why I say it's easy for me to spot people like you because in that homeless shelter, when you're in the homeless shelter and you're in the free lunch program, you get a chance to see how the people that's helping you look at you. See, I was a child and I could see the ones who was doing it genuinely and the ones that was looking down and talking condescending, you know, mad that they was there. You know, I heard some of the people calling the kids stank. Just disrespectful motherfuckers. Kids are already in a bad situation and you're going to take them lower by calling them stank? It's people like Dr. Boyce that I can notice very easily. Because like I said, I didn't have to go to college to get a PhD. I think I lived and my life experience gave me everything I needed. And I know condescending bitches like you. I know school teachers that told kids that they wasn't going to amount to nothing because of where they came from. I was one of them. Mm -hmm. So I know condescending bitches like you. So I speak for those kids that know motherfuckers like you that are in position of power. And I know this one through line. It was always that counselor that everybody liked that was doing the worst shit. It was always that, that, that teacher that had the best reputation in public. That was emasculating the little boys, pulling their ear and disrespecting them the most. And every time that they were about to get in trouble, they always had a network of people to call to vouch for their goddamn character. And so that seemed to make whatever actually happened go away. So I'm good at spotting motherfuckers like you, Doc. Yeah. I already know why you motherfuckers hide in groups. Like I said, Look at the worst serial killers. They don't look like killers. Look at the most dangerous people. They don't look dangerous. They all got friends and everybody love them. They usually don't. You don't even know they're key. I could just spot you, your kind, Doc. Being a child and being observant, I can see your kind. And you that kind. You a weasel. So, like I said, I ain't here to make that many friends. I'm here to find out how you think. There's a lot of people that didn't agree with me. I didn't take down their videos. There's a guy up there that he say I'm a fraud and all kind of stuff. He was going against my videos all the time. He ain't get no flag. That's his opinion. He's still eating off of it.
Now I'm gonna flag the guys that start getting that start going overboard and saying I'm I'm gay and the G word and you know offering me to the lower parts and saying that my followers are riding my lower part. You guys are probably gonna get flagged. Uh, but uh, everybody else that's just not agreeing, why would I flag you? That's your opinion. I'm I'm preaching that I don't want no go along get along game. So I'm not gonna flag you for your opinion. I think I got a pretty good tactic. People think I need moderators. No, I think everybody need to talk. And even the ones that's trolling, they are exposing themselves. If you're not going to come in and say something that make any type of sense, we can see you. So I like it. I like it. We can see you. You can come in here and say something stupid. Oh, you're an idiot. Oh, you're a fucking punk. Oh, you're this. That shouldn't matter to you. <laughs> I could be whatever you like. As long as it don't bother you, it don't bother me. They've been talking about me for 20 years. So if you come in and say something stupid, this the time I'm going to break. <laughs> oh, shit. This is the time I'm gonna break because you say something. A stranger. Most of you don't even have a goddamn picture of a stranger. At least be a. Hey, look here. The ones that come in and talk shit, put a picture up of a fine woman as your emoji. At least give me something to look at. <laughs> this stupid motherfucker. Shit. God damn. But anywho, um, I know the title says y'all are not witnessing beef. You are witnessing the go along, get along gang doing what they do. The go along, get along gang only knows how to use black folks. That somehow their money will be affected by somebody saying something that can actually change the sickness in our black community. And so they attack those black folks. Well, see, I'm not just trying to make it just about me. It's about all of us. All of you guys can go outside today and go down to your local housing authority, school systems, whatever, and they know the parents that need help. You guys don't have to wait on some one person's plan and overall mission before you start doing something yourself. See, that's how they brainwash you to keep thinking you got some leader and they got to do it for you and you got to live through me. No, you got to live too. They're, like I said, there's a kid in your neighborhood that you drive past every day that you can make an impact more than you know. Some of these kids just need a smile and something to eat. And a couple dollars in their pocket. Some of them want to work their ass off. They just don't know how. They just don't know how to get a job. They don't have the right clothing to get a job. They don't have the right social skills to get a job. But we talk about we love these kids. We, we, we talk a lot in our community. But I notice when we talk the most, we're being led by white people. When black folks talk the most, they're being led by white people. We got this mob mentality in our black community that if someone disagrees with something popular, they get attacked by nothing but black people. And these very same black people thinking that they're saving and helping the black community. But then when you ask them, what the fuck are you saving and helping when black boys are reading at a fourth grade reading level? When we're at almost 80% unmarried, when our kids are angry, they will shoot you wherever they see you at. At a mall, at a gas station, at a club, at a restaurant. Those are kids that are not attached to nothing. They're not being raised with mama's cooking. Most of them don't even know their daddy. So y'all are trying to protect that? You leaders that's been out here running and shouting and yelling and preaching, you're going to protect that? 
and you're not going to join in on the fun and try to push for coding to get in these schools. You're not going to join in on the fun and try to get trades back in these schools because that was the biggest mistake that we've ever made. Now we have unskilled, uneducated, mostly black males out on these streets. But we they got one good skill. Oh, yeah, they got a good skill. They got to buy any means necessary skill. These are our soldiers that you elders have left out here to only fend for themselves. There's no programs for black males. There's no nothing but be a man. He make a mistake and get a girl pregnant. He's behind the eight ball right away. A female get pregnant at 14, 15. We give her a fucking TV show and call it 15 and pregnant. And oh, she's a queen. You elders that are getting enriched by keeping us sick. I know why y'all ain't been saying nothing to me. Because y'all know I'm right. Y'all just hoping somebody deal with me before I get a little bit too loud. But the people hear you. The people see you. The people can see the pastors and planes and Maseratis. And everybody that go in there is below the poverty, uh, poverty line. And it'd be easy for those pastors to fix that issue. But they know better. Allegedly, I think, maybe. The mega churches got the money already. They can build community centers in their churches. They got the land already. They can build gyms and everything. Shouldn't be no kids reading at no goddamn going fourth grade reading level when they can put coding on their church grounds. When they can put uh, read to achieve programs in there, we got some of the best reading black women that go to church. Volunteer your time, sister. No, you ain't coming in here to put on red bottles and stilettos, are you? Yeah, we really don't want to stop this shit that's going on. Because I ain't the only one see this shit. How can a little old busty bus with no education know all this? We don't want to we don't want to stop this shit. It's easy. You give people a way to make money. People that are living in a better situation. You could take a straight up gang member and put him in a different environment, a better situation. And he gets a family. He gets something to live for. And he'll stop doing whatever it was he was doing. When he see that girl, little eyes, and he see, he see how it made his woman happy, and he's there feeling like a man, being able to provide without having to pull that thing out, and he got steady income that make him feel proud of it, he ain't finna go out there with the gang gang. Shit, he got a gang gang he already created. They don't want that shit. Y'all notice something? They keep us in dysfunction, shooting guns in the neighborhood we live in. But I said it on one of my lives a long time ago on Facebook. They want you to keep shooting in those neighborhoods because most they realize they messed up. Most of the projects is right next to downtown or either right next to water or right next is is social is uh, centrally located to everything that they have now. It's usually a project, the gang infested neighborhood, and they keep you motherfuckers in a certain block and you know better than go past a certain block where you used to. And then they had the rich, nicey shit, shit right there. Well, now those people want to come back to those neighborhoods. They don't want to drive all the way down from the suburbs. So you know what they're doing? Now that you done shot up in all these goddamn neighborhoods, they coming back to buy them motherfuckers. Look at New York. There's some nice ass areas in Brooklyn and Harlem and all kind of shit that you couldn't walk through back in the day. Keep shooting them guns they dropping off to you. That's all they want you to do. You a part of the go along, get along gang. You just don't know it. Cause all you do is kill and hurt niggas. And then you drive the property value down so low. They come in, regentrify the neighborhood, throw you out to another neighborhood that they don't want. And then they make it beautiful and now they have access to everything. Oh, I heard O Block was for sale. Still think I'm crazy.
They're using these black boys to shoot up all in these streets. And this is no diss to none of y'all. They're using these black boys to use their aggression and anger, lack of education, lack of access to wealth, to take it out on each other, drive the property value down, fighting and shooting and claiming blocks that you don't even own. And now they about to throw you out. In the same old block that y'all done shot up and killed people over, allegedly, no offense to none of y'all, but the same blocks that you guys have done all this over and warred over, they're about to be named something new and you're not even going to be allowed to be there. And I guarantee you, they're going to make sure no white babies get hit uh, through doing TikTok videos through the window. They're going to show you what tax dollars and when people don't shoot in the street really mean. They're going to make that next seven years after they sell O Block, go look at it in seven years and watch how beautiful it is. Did they do that already to Cabrini Green? Yeah, I think I think they did that. I think so. I think they did that already to uh, Cabrini Green. Uh, yeah, they they're gonna do it all over America. See, that's the new stick. That's the new hustle. Send black people to somewhere. They're gonna fight. They're gonna shoot. Drop off some guns to one. Give some propaganda in the media. Keep the drama going. Have them shoot each other because they don't know how to talk. We took critical thinking out of schools. The mothers don't talk to them. The fathers don't, don't talk to them. Hell, they ain't even there. So these kids don't know how to talk and think and break down. If I shoot at this guy over whatever amount, I'm going to be in prison for the rest of my life. They don't know how to break that down. They just, ah! So they put these guys in situations to bring the property value down. <laughs> yeah. Buy it for pennies on a dollar. Make it beautiful. Then wherever they ship you at, I just learned that the opportunity zones is really uh, money that these rich people is trying to hide to avoid capital gains. So they're going to want their money back after they pay for your problems and your situations because we're kind of causing them on ourselves sometimes with all these guns. Sometimes kind of, sometimes kind of, because I know y'all like to break down everything. So they ain't blaming everything. I never used those words, everything. I said sometimes kind of. So if any of you try to dissect and you change my words, fuck you. OK, sometimes kind of we're causing the issue on ourselves, and we don't see how economics play into your violence. And I don't understand why Doc couldn't say that because he's the economic major. But I know why he don't say that, because his probably his Asian zaddy is the one coming back, buying up the neighborhoods. And you're wondering why. And probably the Arabic guys. And you wonder why there's a liquor store in every corner. Because once they own the property, they can bring their guys in from overseas and everywhere else and put them on all the stores in your neighborhood. And you ain't going to do shit to them. But let all the stores be owned by black people. You'll rob the motherfucker every day. Allegedly. I think. Maybe. I'm just crazy. We got one black owned gas station. Um, it's close to my hometown in Brunswick. It's in Jacksonville, Florida. Some women, shout out to you ladies. They own a BP gas station. We got one and everybody celebrated like we just shook up the earth. It's a good start. But one, in 2021, and we've been claiming we free when it seemed like most everybody money is connected to somebody white, uh, Arabic or, uh, Asian, somebody or not of their own color. Let's just put it that way. It's always connected to somebody that can control them. I don't understand what we're looking for and what we're trying to get to, but I think if we start looking at our individual families and our family structure and doing the best we can in those areas, stop looking so 
nationwide because they tricking you through the media. If we start taking care of our own individual communities with the six or seven people that you know, doing the things that I said, where well, you're starting with these children, we got to go back to the foundation. We got to start talking to our elders. There's always been that old woman or that old guy in that community or both that has not ever been afraid to say whatever it is to anybody that they need to hear. If they see a young lady doing something wrong, there's always that woman that called her out that that young lady wouldn't turn and beat her up. That young lady will respect her words and try to listen and mind her manners. That young man, when an older gentleman told him to pull his damn pants up, I wasn't allowed to turn around and pull out a Draco on an adult that told me to pull my pants up. I had to listen and pull my pants up. Because if I didn't listen to them when I got home, it was going to be on. We got to get back to that. Put your damn phone down and stop trying to attach to every group that don't give a fuck about you. Black Lives Matter put up on their damn website. I'm here to destroy the nuclear family. And people were so brainwashed and so afraid to even say something against a phrase when we can read. Fuck a phrase. Fuck a slogan. I been said I didn't like I said I believe in the slogan Black Lives Matter because I do believe that and I understand that. But what they said was they're here to destroy the nuclear family. And I'm not with that shit. I destroyed my own nuclear family by having kids out of wedlock. So I already know what the results of that is. So why in the fuck would I sit here and sign up for when I got kids mad at me now? Because I can't be with them every damn day. I can't get with that shit. And there's too many men too pussified to say something. What the fuck is wrong with y'all? Oh, I forgot. Some of y'all like boys married the girl that left your ass. Goddamn. Ain't like you until you got eight million dollars. Stupid punk. But uh, what time is it? I think Bam Bam about to get up and ask me for some cereal if he ain't already up. And that's why I got on earlier. Yeah, it's 8.46. I'm about to get ready to get off this thing because I know my daughter. And I know she about to be hungry. That's an eating little joker there. So, um. I'm going to go ahead and cut it early so she don't come in here and bother me. But um, I'm happy that she's here. So I might not be on for a while later. I might be on late, late after I get her tired, let her swim for 25 hours somewhere or something. I don't know. But I'll be back on later. You guys have a blessed uh, rest of your day. Peace.